Hello and welcome to today's video. Today we have a special guest, Expat American. You may already know him. If you don't, just know that you guys can click the links below and go check out his channel. You can, I mean, you already know we don't live in Moscow, but he does. Everybody's life in Russia is different. For us, it's Lake Baikal all day, every day. Uh, I think we're very lucky and fortunate to live in this part of the world, right? Yes, we just take bike and come very fast. Yeah, basically we came here on a bike to let you know that the following video is an interview that we had amongst ourselves, that his version where he asks me things is on his channel. So please go over there and check that out. But without further ado, let's get into the interview. I'm here uh, with a special guest. This is going to be hopefully the first of many of its kind. And what motivated me to do it is this man who's sitting here. I'm going to let yourself introduce yourself, please. Hello guys, I am Joseph Stephen Rose, also known as the Expat American on the internet. When was the original idea for you coming to Russia? When did you be like when did it happen? So that would be about four years ago. I was on vacation in Moscow and it was my uh, my fourth vacation in Moscow. And I had a Russian wife that I had been married to for several years at that point. And I had had two children with her. And we were just having another great vacation in Russia. And she was missing her home. And I remember thinking to myself, you know what? Maybe I will move here. Maybe I could live here. Which was a revolutionary thing for me to think. Because when I married her... Um, I was thinking to myself, there's no way I would ever live in her country. And uh, I'm the husband anyway. She's going to move here to America. And of course she did. Um, and all was well. But it was definitely set in my head. I, I, like I had to tell myself, you're not going to live in Russia. You know, assimilating to a, a new place. Um, I've had my own process here in Siberia. I want to know what it's like for someone who has no idea what Moscow is like. What is it like having to assimilate to such a monstrous city? Because it is in itself, even if you come from the West, in my in my opinion, being from Los Angeles, it is a mind-blowing city. So what are, what are the type of things you have to get used to if you move to Russia to a place like Moscow? Uh, that's a good question. So for me, you know, I grew up in small town Florida, uh, but if you're not familiar with the U.S. or that part of the world, Basically, it's like Georgia. It's, it's like the mountains. It's like the woods. It's not like beach looking because I'm right on the Georgia border. And, but we do have universities in my town. So it was a, it was a good mix of white collar and blue collar. And um, I would go to New York City often uh, for vacations and then also for university. I went to film school at NYU. And so I was used to being in a big city from time yeah. to time. So I knew what that was like. And also New York City um, in the early 80s, late 90s was not really a, a safe place. You know, it was, it was like Gotham City and Batman. And so I had been kind of like cured and, and put through the ringer to be adjusted to that where they tell you, don't look anyone in the eye. You know, keep your wallet in your front pocket. Um, you know, yeah. just be, don't go down an alley. Be very careful. You know, so I was, it was like drilled into my head that, you know, if you go to a big city, it'll kill you if you're not careful. Coming to Moscow, I was ready for something like that. And I was completely ready for it. I was like, I, I got this. Um, but it, it turns out that, yeah, I mean, it's still on planet Earth. You're still going to be careful. But it is so incredibly safe. It's unbelievable. So it, it is dense like New York City. It is busy like New York City. Um, but I mean, you know, I'm sure there's crime because there's people here and there's sin, but you, do, you don't see it. You know? You've been here for a year and a half. Yes, you've been here long enough to where you would notice some things that you've picked up. Is there certain things that you can point out that you said, hey, I've adopted this from the Russian culture that you can... Uh, clearly say to someone uh, so they get an idea of the kind of things that you've picked up? 
Oh, good question. Uh, yeah, definitely taking the shoes off in the house. That is that is something I picked up as well. It, it sounds weird now because I grew up in a place where you wore your shoes in your house. And I remember thinking at times as a child, you know, we wear these shoes outside. We walk in unclean public restrooms with these shoes. And now we're walking in our living room and in our bedroom in these shoes. Um, but, you know, that's just the way everyone did it. You don't take your shoes off. Um, and, and on top of that, um, in the 70s and 80s, it, f- for sure, it's like carpet in your house. So yeah. carpet is like a jacket that you never run through the washing machine. You know, you you you, you sort of clean one side sometimes, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Carpet is dirty. And then you're walking on carpet in shoes that have been outside. Blows um, my mind. Yeah. So my, my of course my Russian wife, you know, was like, no, we're taking the shoes off, you know. So I, I learned that one really quick and, and yeah, now now I'm used to it. Like what do you think the purpose of the of your channel is? What is the the message or the core uh idea behind your channel that you would like to tell people that is your channel? Yeah, well, that, that's an easy question for me because I'm certainly very passionate about it. I want my channel to be seen by the West, and I want the West to see it and say to themselves, wow, Russia is not a bad place. <clears throat> and I want them to then either pressure their governments to lay off a of Russia to end the Cold War, or I want them to immigrate here and live their best life here. Um, And I would have never started the channel if the new Cold War hadn't happened Um, because I I was here. Things were fine. You know, I'm like I said, I'm going to be 50 soon. So I'm an older guy. You know, I had I had had success in business already. And I was just I was kind of slowing down, kind of like early retirement, you could say. I mean, Mm -hmm. why would I start a new business I know nothing about? When I've already been successful and I'm, and I'm getting older, you know, the we got we moved here and then eight days later, the special military operation happened and I felt sick. I felt like, did I put my kids in danger? Did I make a mistake? What would you say is their opinion? Is is your uh, comment section like between those two communities? Is it a friendly uh, opinion? Like what is the feeling that you get from from the comment section? Yeah, it's at least 90 percent friendly. I would say at least maybe 95, Um, you know, some people are negative and they genuinely feel what they feel and they're just being honest and 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 that's fine. And then there are, uh, there's a a very small minority of people that you can tell, you know, maybe they're being paid by a company or they're just, they're really, really angry because why would you leave? (laughs) five short negative comments per video all the time it's like yeah. you know get a life man i mean you know if i don't like a video if i don't like what the guy's saying or their channel i'm just not gonna watch it you know why am i gonna go around and just you know pester and pester and pester um it doesn't bother me you know because if you're doing a youtube channel uh, you you if you have to have thick skin or you're gonna get it real quick but i i think that russians have no problem with America. It's DC they have a problem with. And sadly, the reverse is not the case by and large because Americans have not been told the truth. They don't know. They just think Russia bad, all of it's bad. Whereas I think Russians, they they make they make the difference. And they like Americans by and large, but they don't like American leadership right now. And it, it's sad. It's very sad to me, you know, because I see these Russians I'm getting to know uh, culturally that, that I care about and I see their hearts and I see that they can distinguish. And my own people in general right now cannot, you know, Americans. While you were growing up, do you get the same feeling? I know you called it the second Cold War. Do you see similarities between that, uh, your, like your youth and now you're having to go through it again? Can you kind of elaborate uh, what it felt like, please? Because I myself never really went through the Cold War, but I feel now with the Russia phobia that I've experienced, like through my friends in the military, 
Uh, even myself, when I was in the Marine Corps, I thought I had to go to war with Russia eventually at some point. So could you please tell us what those two uh, Cold War eras, and I'm going to officially call this the second Cold War, like you mentioned, because it is ridiculous. Could you tell us a little yeah. bit about both? Yeah, it, it obviously is. You know, I mean, I, I think it took me about a couple of weeks to stop saying maybe we're in a new Cold War. And I was like, no, we're just, <laughs> it's a Cold War. I mean, what, what else could it be? You know, it's, it's no yeah. question here. Um, yeah, I'm glad you said that. You're right, because since I was born in 1974, you know, I, I, and and the the you know the Soviet Union fell like like in '91, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, just think about that. All my entire life until my late teen years, there was this place, this huge place called Russia that I was told was the bad guy place, and they had a border, and their citizens could not leave is what I was told. And there would be movies and TV shows on top of that, you know, where you're watching serials, where it's like there's this this giant evil empire that people cannot get out of. And, you know, you'd have your heroes um, sneaking in and sneaking out, you know, on, on TV shows, you know, on fictional TV shows. Um, and that's just the way it always was. I was born into this world. You know, it was, it was like that my whole life. There was no reason it would change. And then on the news, when it did change and the wall came down, I was like, wow, we are watching history in the making, you know? And, and my impression was they were the ones that poked the wall, the Soviet Union, Russia, you could say. And now being married to Russian and, and moving here and then having it start immediately again. Golly. But the difference is now the wall is being put up from everyone else around Russia. So Quite literally, like, it feels like, yes. Yes. So it's, it's like, you know, when I was born to a world where let's, you could say, let's say the Slavic world put a wall around themselves. And now I'm living in a world as an adult where the world is putting a wall around the Slavic world. What have you seen outside of Moscow? Could you tell us? Yeah, yeah. So I have been to St. Petersburg, which is like the second city, I guess you could say. So like I've yeah. said, if, if Moscow's the king, St. Petersburg is the queen. It's a little bit smaller, I think. And it is very romantic and artistic looking. It's got canals running through it. Um, it is a, a, a four-hour speedy train away or an eight-hour overnight slower train away. Um, and so I've, I've been there a lot, you know, just like if you're in California, like you and I were, you would often take a trip to Las Vegas. So it's that mm -hmm. sort of thing where it's, it's nearby. It's not that far away. It's, it's beautiful. It is absolutely stereotypical. The idea of the best version of Europe. Um, and we've had this interview uh, on your channel, and I know just by this answer that you haven't been to Siberia. So, Lake Baikal, I want you to tell the people uh, when you're coming. I mean, if you want to come, when you're coming, I want to know uh, because I'm very proud of being a resident of the lake. And I want to know what your opinions are on the lake. I know a lot of people from Moscow and St. Petersburg come and visit. And I know that because uh, they look a little bit different than the locals. But uh, what is your opinion on the lake? I, I have heard about it. It is the biggest fresh body of water. And I've seen pictures. I've seen videos. And, you know, in wintertime, it freezes. And the ice is incredibly thick. And you can see all down through it. The water is nice and clear and the cracks and all. And off the top of my head right now, if I could only go to one more new place in Russia, I think that is number one on my list. I can't think of another place in Russia I haven't yet been to. I think that is the main, main thing I'd love to do. Uh, probably second to that would be trying, uh, seeing what our, a river cruise would be like in Russia, because uh, apparently they have rivers and they have little cruise ships on the rivers. And that's Insane. something I haven't done before. Um, so I definitely want to try that. But yeah, I mean, because I'm, I was raised a country boy and, and, and camping and mountain climbing and all that <laughs> stuff, I just, Lake Baikal looks perfect. It looks like paradise. It looks so nice. And you live on it. Yeah. So. To my, like, to my left, there's a mountain range. You get to, I disappear into the forest and to my right is Lake Baikal. 
and behind me there's a river so like i'm surrounded by absolute nature and i think that you would i know that they say that the further up north you go in in florida the further south you go yes in the south so i know that saying and i know where you come from i even get chills because i in my i had a lot of marine buddies from florida like they were like what the hell were, what do you mean florida why are you talking like that it's like why are you a country boy so like for anybody who's watching from the united states I'm sure you know that the further north you go in Florida is the further south you go in the United States. Um, I have a series of questions here that I want to ask you. It's just going to be like rapid fire. So off the top of your head, um, so that they could be as honest and pure as possible. So here we go. Got it. Why should someone come to Russia? Because Russia is a place for traditional family values. Nice. Um, now, why why is a reason why you think someone shouldn't come to Russia, like a reason why you think they shouldn't come? Uh, if they don't like traditional family values, I don't want them here. <laughs> that's, that's a really good answer. I have similar thoughts, <laughs> opinions about that. So do you have any regrets about coming to Russia? Uh, no, I do not. Okay. And this is going to be a really important one. Any advice? To some, do you have any advice to someone who wants to come to Russia? Yes, I would say uh, get your three-year visa now and make plans now because uh, I think the world is changing fast and I think you should take every opportunity and come see this place and decide if you might want to live here. I've told many people before, I said, look, I'm, you don't have to move to Russia because you're watching these videos. So you must obviously like something about Russia. Get that three-year visa if you're American, especially because it is one of the best visas you can get. You can stay up to six months. And um, I really appreciate the time that you've taken to, to sit down and talk with me. Guys, I've said it already. His page, his YouTube channel is going to be linked on the description, on the name of the title of the video. Joseph, thank you so much. That you are the expat American. This has been in a beautiful, beautiful moment for me. And I hope that we can do this again in the future. If we have anything, I do expect to go to Moscow. And I do expect you to come to Lake Baikal. Dan, I loved it. You're on my heart because we both spent so much time in California. I know we, we know each other, even though we just met. And yeah, I can't wait to see you in Moscow to see me and me in Lake Baikal to see you one day. And so my friends, from the shores of Lake Baikal, the largest lake in the world, we appreciate your support. We appreciate all the comments. Please let us know anything you have in your mind. Put it down below. We answer every question, right? Yes. So we'll see you on the next one. Bye.